you know, it started it just started off with this simple idea of like, let's get these kids to a safe place into a home. Yeah. But it turned into this ripple effect that you really wouldn't be able to quantify because so many people were inspired by the children. Welcome to Hello World, where we rediscover the good that is all around us. In this episode, we will talk to Scott Lambie, the former director of development for African Children's Choir. With a mission of transforming the lives of these African children, the African Children's Choir aims to reach out to the world through music that transcends cultural boundaries. Get ready to be inspired by the wonderful story of African Children's Choir. Welcome to the Hello World Podcast, and um, you know today we're going to talk a little bit about the African Children's Choir uh, that you were a uh, former director of development for. Yes. Yeah. So before we dive into that, though, I, I just try to remember because that's one of the first ministry that you approached me on, and we talked a little bit about that. Um, I'm just trying to kind of go back and remember the event in which that we got connected about that particular ministry. Do you remember that? Kind of go back and tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got involved um, with ACC, and, mm -hmm. um, and what happened after that. Yeah, sure. I can um, go back in time on that one. We were, we were a part of the same church yeah. in Austin, Texas, and that's how we that's originally right. got connected. You know, my wife and I were relatively new believers at the time we met mm -hmm. you in Virginia. And we were kind of working through what does all of this mean? Like, what does this faith journey mean? And what does it look like to follow Jesus? And right. we didn't know. We were, we were just discovering things. And along the way, and even at the beginning of that journey, it was always kind of like this um, This call always felt like it was to, to children, to help children in poverty and didn't know what that was supposed to look like. I was working at tech in tech at the time. My wife Sarah was working in tech at the time. We were we were successful in in our careers, uh, but our faith started turning that upside down. And we we really felt um, a call towards the the, the impoverished child. And okay. um, at that time. When I was going through that journey, I was thinking about things like I want to get into music and I want to see the world, but I also want to help children. And how how does how do all of those concepts to come together? And through a series of discoveries and people and events um, swirling around, God led us to the African Children's Choir. And our church, The Well, um, went on a mission trip to Kenya. Yeah. And... Uh, I went with the with the crew. Did not want to go to Africa, and spent ten days there. Uh, seven of those days working with the African Children's Choir mm -hmm. uh, in the slums, doing a VBS, and I just fell in love with the kids. Mm -hmm. They were they were living in this extreme poverty, mm. but had tremendous joy, and I couldn't reconcile any of that. And the organization needed someone to go uh, to Uganda and ramp up some business administration efforts and start a start an organization and get some systems in place and we're building schools at the time. Okay. And so, very long story, very short, we decided to leave our careers in tech, sell off our things, and move to Uganda uh, to serve the African Children's Choir. And that oh. was in 2009 that we moved. 2009. So mm -hmm. I'd like to dive a little bit deeper behind the, your thought process and decision process to leave what you have sort of been a journey, career journey that you were on before and thought that you would stay on and how did you decide to make a really big change? Um, so you mentioned that when you went on, went with the well, uh, church and um, working with the African children, you were not able to reconcile something in your head, and that prompted you to really want to consider 
this ministry. Can you kind of dive a little deeper about the struggle, as you said, or that conflict that, that caused you to really rethink the track that you will be on on your life? Yeah, and it kind of dials back to, I think, this, um, this narrative that we're sold that money is going to make you happy. And when you're, when you're coming out of college, when I came out of college, I really thought, okay, I'll just go out and earn as much money as I possibly can and get all the mm-hmm. things that um, you see on the, the dream boards of life, um, the houses, the cars, the boats, and, and save up a bunch of money and become financially free. And, you know, we were getting close to that. We were getting there and like close enough to, to have plenty put away. We had all the things we, we ever dreamed of having and something didn't feel right. Something felt empty. Okay. Um, and there, it was, it was a lack of purpose really, uh, looking Mm -hmm. back on all of it and a lack of a spiritual guide or any sort of spiritual guidance in our life. So mainly, um, mainly dialing into what you could call basically greed and, you know, it's, we all do it. We all get sucked into it. We all we all get consumed by it. But it's like um, our our culture really celebrates what um, what requires on the on the on the underlying effort is some level of greed to become successful and have yeah. what be, what looks like a successful life. And that all felt empty. And we started just pursuing um a spiritual journey which ended up leading us to jesus but having a hard time reconciling these kids in joy in poverty was part of that because you know in one way you you've been chasing this thing your your whole adult life and it's and it's come up empty for you and in in a very short amount of time you're on the other side of the world in one of the most extremely impoverished places, right. and these these people are have more joy than you do, and so what 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 that what that it's so hard to reconcile that. But looking back on it, you realize that life isn't all about money. Life isn't all about mm. self preservation. Life isn't all about comfort and control and. Yeah plotting out your own, um, your own path. And when you start following Jesus, you realize that our lives aren't really not our own and all of the selfish endeavors that, that we pursue, um, really don't take us anywhere, but like through a life of generosity and a life of giving and a life of healing and reaching the widow and the orphan and the impoverished and, and helping other people, that's what we learned from Christianity and and started to put into practice. And mm. we saw different returns coming back to us than, yeah. you know, your capital gains return. You get this spiritual return and a feeling of love and, yeah. and gratitude and, um, and appreciation and fulfillment and purpose and meaning and something that you can kind of look back on and instead of the garage full of cars, um, you know, a lot lot of lives that have been changed and, and just because you've been able to set something aside that would be for yourself and give to others, it's, it's the most fulfilling experience. And, you know, that was in 2009 that we, we set off on that and fast forward to now. And it's like, so glad we did that. Yeah. Continue to, yeah. Continue to be glad that we were led in that direction. Yeah. So we've been following you guys uh, on your journey and uh, to various places. And um, I know you have, you know, spent quite a bit of time um, with the African Children's Choir and took them on different tours, right? So those are really exciting. And whenever you're in town, you're able to reach out to us and say, hey, come over to this church and check out these kids. And when we saw them, the energy was just going through the roof. Um, So I know you were very instrumental in their tour in the U.S. Um, But before we 
get into the tour itself, maybe we step back a little bit. If you can tell us how how does African Children's Choir start and what is their mission? Sure. Um, well, the African Children's Choir started in 1984, and the founder's name is Ray Barnett. He was uh, an adventurous, very adventurous man. He's still alive, still um, on the board of directors, and um, he he was in Uganda doing some research because there there was a civil war going on. Everybody remembers the name Idi Amin, uh, uh -huh. but around that time, the country was going some, through some serious turmoil, and he went there because he heard people were, were starving to death and right. doing some research in the central part of Uganda, he picked up a boy who needed a ride and the boy sang and he saw this potential um, for these children and to raise awareness for the atrocities going on at Uga in Uganda at the time, he decided, well, let's bring a, a choir of these children out and show the Western world the potential that these kids have and raise awareness around the needs that are back at home. And so that started off in 1984 and continued on. The first African Children's Choir came out. It was a, a massive success. Nobody had ever done anything like that before. And you're literally going into a church and seeing these children that have come all the way from the other side of the world who you'd expect to be star, you know, back in those days, all you saw on television was starvation and mm, yeah. um, you know just a very sad scene but then this presentation of the child singing and dancing and high energy uh blew people's minds and right. they start people started sponsoring the kids to go to school uh, homes were built uh programs were established and throughout the years uh the the organization continued to grow and it grows like a family so you know, the, the kids that were there uh, in 1984 on tour um, with Choir One are still around and they're like aunties and uncles to the kids that are in Choir 52, which is in training right now. And so wow. there's this massive family feel and culture of taking care of each other. Wow. And so the, the primary goal of, of, the, of the organization is to help the most vulnerable children in Africa so they can help Africa tomorrow. And it really played out, really panned out. It's worked. And, you know, what started with a very simple home for kids has uh, evolved into international standard education for kids as the, as the dynamics of Uganda and, and East Africa change, the, meet, the needs and the, and, the, and the quality of education programs have, have evolved along with that. So, uh, 52 plus thousand children have been educated through the organization. 52,000. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a large number. That's wonderful. Yeah. You know, I, I love the story that you mentioned how the genesis of it, that the founder was simply listening to a child sing and voila, this kind of division came about. Often that we miss little little things, and there's power even behind that little, you know, the singing and, and create this whole vision, how this whole thing unrolled, um, which is amazing. To to even like the purpose of of the of this podcast and like showing the good, you yeah, know, yeah. Um, one could look at the situation in Uganda that was going on at the time, which was effectively a genocide, and find yeah. hopelessness in it, yeah. you know. Yeah. But you can find like. Ray found this one glimmer of, he found this glimmer of joy, this glimmer of hope, hope. and magnified that and, and magnifying the good in the world uh, turned into something that I think even he couldn't have possibly imagined mm. has helped, you know, so many people just by holding up the good and not focusing on the tragedy, but like we can do something, yeah. we can change this world and it just takes... Um, a little courage, a couple of steps of faith, and then holding up what's good, and maybe something amazing comes out of that. So yeah, and even even so, looking at your own story, right, that you went on a trip and you noticed happiness is not dependent on money. Um, I, I actually had I rec you know I definitely 
resonate with your experience. I had a chance also to uh, visit Mexico. It's amazing that once you cross the U.S.-Mexico border into Mexico, uh, there are no street lights, the road, no paved road. Um, there are many uh, impoverished um, communities. Uh, I just remember playing with the kids and they were kicking around a flat soccer ball, like completely deflated, but they're kicking around mm -hmm. and just having the happiest time. And uh, I, I figure, you know, if, if they can find so much joy in a deflated soccer ball, you know, clearly it's not the soccer ball. It's just the, the joy of playing with others, is enjoying the outdoor, the sunshine, the camaraderie with other children. Yeah. So, you know, in the same way, that we, we should find joy in, in many different things that are already available to us. It is not money. Um, so that's, um, um, that's wonderful. I, you know, can, can you give us some sort of anecdotal story about, uh, you know, some of the exciting things on the tour? I know um, there's some famous people who took part in the, uh, and met with the African Children's Choir, right? They did it even mm -hmm. perform with them. Can you give us some, some uh, sort of backstage story on what's happening there? Well, there's a lot of those stories out there. I mean, the kids were took, took the Western world by storm, and, uh, you know, they, they were called upon to uh, participate in, um, you know, Live Aid, and they, they were on stage with so many different celebrities representing their country throughout the years, like, um, Bono from U2 and oh, wow. um, okay. yeah, uh, Mariah Carey, uh, they've met the Queen of England a, a couple of times. Wow. They sang actually at, at the Queen's Diamond Jubilee celebrations in England um, oh. uh, a few years ago, and that was viewed by 70 million people around the world. Um, so yeah, the celebrity sightings have been a lot. Uh, throughout the years with the, with the children. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of stories out there. Um, you know, I, I, I always, I, when I was kind of going through my journey, I was thinking about getting into music and seeing the world and, and helping children. And I never would have imagined that God led me to yeah. this particular mission because yeah. I ended up seeing the world, uh, with the kids and you know in their music and being with them on tour and then ultimately all of that for their benefit and helping them out of extreme poverty um you know there's there's a there's a lot of uh big platform stories mm -hmm. but i think i think the behind the scenes stories that are really that really bring up the african children's choir and bring out the african children's choir yeah. Um, that nobody really hears about is like staying with host families. And oh. while the kids are on tour, like, they don't stay in fancy hotels. They don't, yeah. you know, there's um, the tour really relies on host families. Mm. And two or three kids in a chaperone will go stay at your home. Mm. And for three days or two days or however long they're in that area, there's no screens. Um, there's like um, there's family time, and right. when the what, when the choir comes to stay with a family, um, the families are super generous. They put their whole life on pause, mm. and they switch off the TV, and they switch off their phones, and they play games with the kids, and they feed <laughs> the kids, and get the kids where they need to be. Yeah, um, and that experience for the the children getting to see what life is like in in a Western style home right. is very impactful for them. But for the host family who's generously uh, carving out that time to take care of the kids, their life is completely changed as well because they're seeing um, this opportunity to give um, of themselves right there in their home. And it and and there's just this love that comes out of it. So you you you'd imagine um, that standing next to Bono would be this <laughs> amazing experience. But the kids don't know what's going on. Like yeah. they don't know who that guy, they don't know who he is. 
Exactly. But the host families are really like where the, a lot of the magic takes place and a lot of love takes place on those tours. Yeah, I think their staying with the host family would change the host family as well. Um, their impact to sure. others. Um, so this is great. So, so African Children's Choir really is a vehicle to really allow the kids, uh, expose the kids to the world and uh, realize there are a world out there that really love them as well. And, and uh, um, so, but if we take it back at home, how does, first of all, how does, how do these children get connected with African Children's Choir? And second, back at home, how does African Children's Choir help these kids apart from the tour? Yeah, um, so, the organization has a number of outreach programs okay. in the slums and in the local communities. Um, so kind of taking the whole organization full circle, um, the, the, the kids that were once in the choir, mm. uh, there's such a history there that they've gone to primary school, secondary school, and university and beyond. Mm. And the university students... Um, give back by going out and participating in these outreaches, which um, they reach these children who live in the slum areas. They do music and games and discipleship okay. and, and feed them meals. And during, through those relationships, needs are identified um, and they, they, can, they can find a kid who's really in a in a desperate need. Uh, okay. And so they're through all of those outreaches, <clears throat> kids are identified. And then there's somewhat of a uh, audition process that takes okay. place okay. where there's some testing for aptitude for the kids. A lot of them haven't been to school. So, you know, knowledge isn't necessarily a test, but ability to learn um, right. social skills, things like that. And then a choir is selected after that choir is selected. Uh, the children go through a training process to get ready for tour. Okay. Uh, and then they go out on the tour, which is, you know, what we were talking about where they're exposed to different, different experiences, different mm -hmm. people, different cultures, Yeah. Take all of that in and then go back to Uganda where there's a very high quality primary school. It's a boarding school where all of the children get their primary education. Mm. And then once they finish with their primary school, there's a high school on a separate campus uh, called the Empower International Academy. And it's an international curriculum. It's a Cambridge curriculum, very high standard um, of, of education and care okay. there. Okay. Uh, and that, that school was just opened four years ago. So there's four classes of, of kids in that school. But after they graduate from there, they go on to university. The organization okay. uh, takes care of their tuition, and they um, they go on to pursue pursue their careers. So right. there's doctors, lawyers, uh, civil engineers, you name it. There's they run the gamut right there in, in the community, giving back. Wow! So it's it's uh, even back home, it's quite an endeavor. Um, infrastructure to support these children. Um, so how, how is ACC funded? Uh, how does the resource itself to be able to give out so much? Uh, well, the tours raise a lot of, of, of awareness and funds. Okay. So well, the kids are out on tour, offerings are taken up um, during the performances. Okay. And people also uh, sponsor the children. And so through those sponsorships, okay. sponsors typically follow those kids uh, for the majority of their scholastic career and help financially. So the, their okay. tuition, school books, wow. uh, food, um, so, and, and many of their other needs, medical, yeah. clothing, a, yeah. a lot of that is taken care of yeah. uh, through the sponsorship program. Wow. So I'm sure being involved and seeing all these things happening must be impactful and change people's worldview or perspective. Um, how, how, what sort of lesson would you glean from your experience with African Children's Choir? How are you personally impacted by it, your journey? 
Hmm. There's, there's so many different ways I could answer that question, Larry. Um, Pick your favorite one. (laughs) I I think, I think uh, for me and my experience, I lived over in Uganda for, for seven years. Okay. And my office where I showed up every morning was for a long time, for a part of the time, it was where the kids went to school. Yeah. Um, you know, as we were building different campuses. And for a while, it was where the, co- the, the, the children did their choir training. Mm-hmm. So if you could imagine showing up to work every morning and having a, like a gaggle of little children run to your car <laughs> to give you a hug before you start work, oh. uh, you can't really recover from There's no job you can go to after that. Yeah. Um, but you're, you, you become part of this family uh, through through the through the process, and you know you take on each other's burdens and you carry each other through, and um, you end up seeing a tremendous amount of joy in that community of like having hundreds and you know thousands of people that you're you're completely connected to, that you share this common bond with, that you share this common culture with this common experience when the choir people are together, they talk about tour uh, highlights and stories and everybody can relate. Like everyone has this one thing that they did together. That is very unlike most things that people would ever get an opportunity to do together. And that's like going out on tour and being part of that team and watching people out there in the Western world, light up with joy yeah. and gain so much from it. There's, it's a real hard question for me to answer, but um, you look back on it and you're like, man, I was part of something that was so much bigger than me ah. and I'm still part of it and I'll never not be a part of it. That is, that is great insight. I think we, I actually believe, you know, all of us, Deep down inside, we all want to be part of something bigger than ourselves. Yeah. Um, so to be able to find that, and it's very fulfilling, right? That's great. Um, so how, how do you think the long-term impact ACC has on the children that it helped? Um, there's there's a, so many ways to answer that question too. I mean, you're looking at an organization that came into a country that was in absolute devastation. And um, there, there, there's the, the children the children themselves that had the opportunity to go out on tour. There's the kids that were also sponsored through the efforts of the African Children's Choir that never got to go on tour. Right. There's the awareness that, that those tours brought to this, the devastation in that country at that time. And then there's the people that were inspired by that who came over and like participated in the rebuilding of that country because they saw the African Children's mm-hmm. Choir. So I would meet people who were there on mission in Uganda mm-hmm. and they would say, oh, you're with the African Children's Choir. The reason I'm here mm-hmm. is because I saw the African Children's Choir when I was a child. Okay. And you would hear that story over and over again. Right. So there was this ripple effect. Yeah. Um, you know, it started, it just started off with this simple idea of like, let's get these kids to a safe place and to a home. Yeah. But it turned into this ripple effect that you really wouldn't be able to quantify because so many people were inspired by the children um, mm-hmm. to go over and make a difference themselves. So. That's great. Yeah. So the impact is, is it's, widespreading and in fact you impact people that you didn't know you'd impact it right there's a lot of lot of unintentional benefactor of people who observed all the good thing that is happening with african children's choir so um so when did you leave african children's choir and what are you doing now so i i left uganda in 2016 okay and continue to work with the African Children's Choir from here in the United States. Right. Uh, but in 2020, during COVID, um, well, I have to back up. We, we ended up adopting three African children 
who now live here in the U.S. with us. And um, one of my daughters, one of my African daughters, mm -hmm. uh, she's now in her 20s. Right. She, was, she was abused as a child. She was sexually abused as a child mm -hmm. and went through a long journey of healing and continues to okay. go through that journey. Okay. But she, during um, lockdown, started talking about using her story um, of abuse to help mm -hmm. other children back in, in Uganda. Okay. And so um, that um, ended up snowballing into this new vision of helping children in Uganda who are suffering from sexual abuse. Okay. And we started an organization called, called Rescue One More okay. uh, in 21. Mm -hmm. And now, now this is also a ripple effect of the African Children's Bar, this organization that we've started. Right that is out there helping uh, children in Uganda who are suffering from sexual abuse. Wow. That's, yeah. uh, that's quite a change. Um, well, but, but just for our viewers, um, understand we will have a follow on episode about rescue one more. And, yeah. uh, so that's a, um, you know, it's a tough subject to cover, but you know, doing good, is not just about, you know, uh, being happy or feel good. Sometimes you have to confront the difficult situation or um, sins and issues in this world and stand up for the weak. Uh, and yeah. I think, you know, rescue one more. That is this big story and in, uh, in the mission. So we'll definitely want to hear more about that. Um, what would be the, the main thing that uh, you will want the listener uh, or the viewer to take away? Well, I think um, for, for, for the viewer personally that is out there wondering, okay, well, I'm here listening to this story, yeah. and it sounds, it sounds like little way more than I could ever do. Um, or, you know, like it can be a bit overwhelming to, to, to think, okay, I'm going to leave my career to go do something. Um, and you don't have to do something. You don't have to. Like, you can bring uh, good into this world right where you are with what's in your hands and what's available to you. Mm. And so, um, you know, don't think that you have to go out there and sell all of your things and move to the other side of the planet mm. to bring, to manifest something good in this world. Like, just whatever's in your hands that you can share um, with somebody else who's in need, right. or even your wisdom and knowledge is okay. something that you wouldn't necessarily think somebody else could benefit from, but there's so much that you as an individual have to offer. Take right. inventory of that and, and give that away. Just find that radical generosity inside of you and see what comes out of that. Bring, some, bring something good out there for also, somebody who's watching this, um, you could really dream, you know, like there's a dream out there mm -hmm. that has always been on your heart. Like mine, I knew mine since I was a little child, but was always afraid to go after it. Mm -hmm. uh, that dream that's there, that's with you right now, yeah. um, that's something that like you can really make a reality and uh, just have to step into it and have some faith and take tiny steps towards it. And if you're finding yourself in a dark situation, I found myself in a dark situation that I had um, buried myself in, in the pursuit of greed. Mm. Uh, you might find yourself in a dark situation for whatever other reason. Mm. Uh, the best way to come out of that is to start helping someone else. Mm. And once you start to help that other person um, or those other people, it'll bring light to you and bring healing to you. Mm. There's this awesome, like this, this verse, uh, this story that has really been on me for the last couple of years uh, is when Jesus is Jesus is talking to his disciples. He says, mm. um, "If you want to be my disciple," in some versions he says, "If you want to be complete, yeah. uh, you have to deny yourself right. and pick up your cross mm. and 
follow me. And it's like, what what is there there for you that you that that is so selfish to to you that you you could deny? Like, I need to deny this thing. And what is the burden that like God has laid at your feet? Mm. Uh, everyone carries some burden for someone else, yeah. or they've been through a tragedy or they've been through a struggle yeah. and and they know the way out mm. um, you can use that mm. that cross that you've had to pick up and carry to bring something to other people mm. so. that's um, yeah thank you for that wisdom and and um, many times we bury that good thoughts or the things that we feel called to and we just sort of nah it's not realistic or I can't and I'm willing to to step out and hearing what you're saying is really um, motivating and um, give our audience and myself you know serious thought you know consider that and so for audience want to you know take part to help off um, the African Children's Choir how would they go about doing that Best way to do it is to go to AfricanChildrenSquire.com and there's opportunities to host, host a, a concert, to be a host family, okay. to give financially, uh, to sponsor a child. And one of the most impactful experiences that you might have with what you have in your hands right now is to sponsor one of these children right. and exchange letters with these kids and okay. encourage them um, yeah. from from where you are right now that makes a lot of sense okay well that information will be included in the in the video and uh well scott that uh, it's really good to talk to you i know we're going to talk again uh soon and sarah and vanessa we're going to you know maybe cover the, the rescue one more and i'd like to hear more about that ministry and the impact that it's making but i just really want to thank you for your service it's been uh uh, really a pleasure to track you and Sarah and your family and and what you're doing. It's amazing. It's a testament of your faith. You know, people were really felt inspired by. So thank you for um, for sharing today. With that, we're just going to say goodbye and uh, uh, we'll come back to you again soon. And that brings us to the end of another exciting episode of Hello World. Please support our podcast by hitting the subscribe button. Also, don't forget to smash that like. Your likes will help our podcast reach more awesome people like you. Lastly, tap that notification bell to receive instant alert whenever we drop in a new episode. We can't wait to see you again on our next episode. Until then, keep on being a positive force in this world.